My name is Joe, and I'm doing a big project on holograms. Now, a hologram is a picture that instead of uh, the information, you know, the picture being stored as light and dark spaces on film, it's stored as, uh, as microscopic light and dark lines on the backside of a glass plate. Now, <coughs> to make these lines, you need, or I you need to use a coherent source of light, like a laser, and it has to, uh, basically the thing has to, the thing that you're making a hologram of can't move more than the diameter of a bacterium while you're making this. Most people just go the, put everything on a 10 ton slab of concrete, route, but you know, I don't have that kind of money because 10 tons of concrete is expensive, so I made this in my basement. Now, uh, this might not be quite as good, but it's it still works, and uh, I'll be showing you how to make holograms on it. Some of the things you need to make the holographic isolation table, as the you know fancy setup I showed you was, um, are a tire, like a, an old bicycle inner tube, basically, some sort of flat surface, like a sheet of plywood, or in my case, a slab taken off of a granite table. I used a sleeping bag, but, you know, padding stuff, basically, to lessen vibrations even more. Dirt, to just be really heavy and do nothing, which is good. The laser you use to expose the hologram, and some shutter stuff, which is pretty much just black cardboard and yarn. Let's go find them. Filfer, steel, yoink! Scam you! <laughs> Borrow without asking? My tape! I'm a bar in my red, non collimated laser! Bar! Oh. For those of you that didn't get it, this is a red, non-collimated laser. Mug! <laughs> this is strictly optional, by the way. It's red! Slowly! A non-collimated laser basically makes a whole... Legit, the laser doesn't go on a line, it goes out in a cone or a, an ellipse. But you can just use a regular pointer and put a bunch of lenses in front of it to make it a cone. Oh, and, uh, yoink, this is yarn. Okay, so when, you, uh, when you're making a hologram, it's also important to choose a subject that's suitable for holographic viewing. <laughs> I mean, like, this? This is really cool and shiny and stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it would be good, but you'd only be able to get a part of it because it's a lot bigger than a plate. I mean, that part would be a good hologram. Things like this, on the other hand, would not make a good hologram. This is, well, I mean, if you had a green laser, this would make a decent hologram, but nobody has green sensitive plates, so we're pretty much stuck with red lasers. And it emits light, which makes it even worse. If it emits its own light, it's just going to mess up the holographic plate, and it's going to ruin it. These tiny ninjas, are too bendy. If anything bends a lot, it also does not make a hologram because it moves around. This is kind of boring. It's a carabiner from the National Guard. And there's nothing about it that's inter... I mean, well, it might be okay because it's shiny. But, I mean, this is shiny and cool. This is just shiny. Um, this radioactive marble? I don't know how well it would show up, but it is very shiny. <laughs> and, you know, it's always cool to look at the that, but... Uh, and also, uh, bleh. one thing about this, again, is uh, you can just cover this in tinfoil, because all of it is, you know, tinfoil blocks light, and reflects red light. So, you know. 
But you really have to get a feel for what you want to make. I mean, white clay is also good. So are Warhammer miniature, miniatures. Anyway, that's all about all I have to say about that. Okay, making your laser isolation table, which is just a fancy way of saying something that sits very still so that your laser can do stuff. Step one, inner tube. On a flat, stable surface in the basement. We. Step two. Put something heavy and flat on it. This is uh, some kind of rock. It used to be a tabletop, but it broke. So you put that on top. Uh, trying to make the inner tube cover as much of the underside of it as possible. Step three. Put a bunch of layers of soft stuff onto it. You know, as many as possible. Ah. This folded up uh, sleeping bag does pretty well. Um, normally I'd add more layers, but we can make a crappy one for this demonstration because I don't want to take all of your time. This is just a layer of cardboard. Then, I get my trusty shovel. Put a whole bunch of disgusting sandy dirt on top of it. Yeah. Yuck. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'll want to be down here very much after this. Then I put another extra fancy sheet of cardboard on top. And this will be my the surface that I do all my work on. You need to put something on it to weigh it down. It can be anything. I use an axe head. And then a pile of dirt to put your laser on. Yummy. Uh, I use uh, the fry the the pan thing for my subject because I can m use magnets to hold my laser plate or my the holographic plate and then I put my fancy schmancy ghettoed together laser on top of the pile of dirt. And, oh yeah. Tangled up cardboard shutter. Goes in front of the laser until I pull it away. That's very important because holding the shutter in front of the laser yourself is not a good thing to do because you have to be right next to the whole setup. And lasers need some time to re or to become more coherent and able to make a hologram before you... So basically, you have to leave it on before you make a hologram. Because of thermal equilibrium and stuff. Okay. Well, that's pretty much how I make my laser isolation table. A quick note on handling your holographic plates. You should keep them in the uh, original case that they came in, you know, which is usually light tight. But after you open it, you know, well, even before you open it, you should probably keep it in a dark place. Mine is in, you know, there, in a computer case, or in a laptop bag, in a guitar case. And it's also taped in the original package. And basically, you don't want light getting to it any time except after it's done, it's being developed, and when it's being exposed.